Well, the physical characteristics of a plant can be reveal, can reveal a lot about the underlying genetics. This can help us answer questions like, how much water does the plant use, or how quickly will the plant grow? By linking traits like these to specific genes, researchers are seeking to improve crops by providing higher yields for farmers and gaining greater food security worldwide. The science of capturing these characteristics in plants is called phenotyping. We recently got a closer look at phenotyping experiments taking place at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. Market Journal's Bill Dodd has the story. Until recently, phenotyping had been a very time and labor-intensive practice. In the not-so-distant past, researchers had to rely heavily on the looks, touch, and feel of a plant. However, now technologies such as drones, robots, cameras, and laser scanners can measure a field of plants in nearly an instant. One tool that has been immeasurably useful for phenotyping is the University of Nebraska's SpiderCam. So SpiderCam is really uh, a very advanced phenotyping facility that Nebraska has uh, invested. And uh, uh, so we set up this uh, field experiment. It's about one acre in size. And those experiments can range from you know, the genetic study to a study of the nitrogen use efficiency or study of uh, you know, the biomass uh, production for the energy crops. And really in the hope to find uh, what is the, you know, the best performing genetics, right? the varieties in the field, or you know, are there any ways that we can manage the nitrogen or water more efficiently so that you know, we can either uh, cons uh, save those resources or in, uh, enhance the efficiency of the plants to use those resources. So all those are you know, within the, uh, the, the objectives of our study. So phenomics in, the, in that sense is really uh, very widely applied. As one of only three of its kind in the world, this spider cam isn't the type of tech your everyday crop producer will have readily available on their operation. However, the work being done with this machine may someday be applied to unmanned aerial vehicles or drones. Because you know you can imagine UAV is small and they are they are very much limited by their battery, and uh, you know with that limited payload, what kind of scientific instruments you are going to use is very critical, and what time you fly the UAV is also critical. You know, for example, we have always found out, in order for you to understand the water use, like the drought stress of the plants, the best way to fly UAV is really not in the morning but right after the middle noon, in the afternoon when the plant is most stressed, your chances to be able to look at the stress symptoms is highest when you fly the UAV that time. So therefore, SpiderCam accumulated a lot of the scientific uh, evidences and uh, uh, the data so that we can translate those information better to the UAV systems. And the UAV is heavily used now for the uh, plant breeding purpose but also even for the larger acre management system, uh, UAV is also used. So we, we can already see what I'm referring to as the transfer, the transition of the technology from the pure research to the applied or the production uh, system. And that's already happening with SpiderCam to UAV. As input costs have continued to rise over the years, Researchers working with the SpiderCam technology are already seeing how the data recorded with these systems can lead to better decision making and ultimately mitigate a sizable fraction of necessary operational inputs. Today we are doing research on nitrogen use efficiency and uh, being able to identify the genotypes that is more efficient and hopefully later on that we can incorporate those specific genes to the uh, commercial varieties. And also we are looking at what are the best technologies really being able to tell what is, which plant is more nitrogen use efficient, right? So that has something to do with using remote sensing and looking at the crop canopy. And you know, the conventional knowledge is greener the plants are, probably more nitrogen they have in, the, in their body. Uh, but there's a, lot of, uh, there's a lot more than that. Right, so, and, uh, and the nitrogen is a very complicated issue inside of the plants, and there's a various chemical forms of nitrogen, and the phenomics is trying to allow us to do better than, you know, we just uh, shallowly looking at the, uh, the greenness of the plants, but, but we're really trying to tackle a lot of other chemical forms that hopefully we can use remote sensing 
uh, to, to be able to tell what is nitrogen concentration, for example, in the plant's leaf. And those would translate into the more advanced technologies, maybe five or maybe 10 years later, when the technology uh, cost reduced, then we can uh, be able to apply that at thousands of acres out there, millions of acres. As growing seasons come and go, the field phenotyping facility near Mead continues to churn out new data every year. Soon enough, you may see new applications of this technology readily available for producers in their fields. Reporting for Market Journal, I'm Bill Dodd.